Hi, my name's Tom from twitch.tv slash Tomination Time. I'm a fitness streamer, and today we're going to do an updated video on disassembling the Confidence Power Plus treadmill. I did a video a long time ago uh, showing how to take this cheap $200 treadmill and break it apart into basically a little landing strip to just walk and really take any standing desk, turn it into a DIY treadmill desk. And honestly, uh, I... I still love it. My treadmill just died recently in, in, in like, I think it was last week. I decided, you know what, we're going to get a new one and we're going to make a new updated video because I started doing content creation and the quality of my stuff has improved a lot compared to when I first did the disassembly video. So we're going to be talking about that. We're gonna be talking about how to take off the handlebars, how to separate the control panel. So that's freestanding, but then how to also remove that annoying beeping, the speaker. We'll be doing all those three things today. A couple quick updates. Um, the previous treadmill lasted five plus years. My last video was like in 2013. So it lasted easily five, six, seven years. And I put a couple thousand miles on it. The only maintenance I did was occasionally using Allen wrench to adjust the belt because once in a while it comes a little bit loose. Uh, and also just lubricating it using some basic silicone lubricant spray, spraying under the belt um, to where it, you know, basically it has friction with the belt and the uh, wooden platform underneath it. You spray the lubricant under there. I did that once every like hundred or a couple hundred miles, once a month kind of thing. So some very light maintenance. It lasted for years. I love it. I still think it's a great uh, value treadmill and really a great option for anybody who wants to do a DIY cheap treadmill desk. So without further ado, let's get to those three things and show how to disassemble this thing. The first thing we're going to do is unscrew this guy right here with our hands. Take that out and then unscrew these four screws. So I'm going to start doing that now and we're going to just fast forward because I'm going to assume you know how to unscrew. Okay, now that that's off, this is a little bit freer, but now we're going to unscrew these four screws. What we're going to do is we're going to take off the panel. It's going to gently slide this around. So I'm just going to gently pull this apart. I'm going to take away this magnet. I don't need this magnet right now. And let's just pop this open. There we go. All right. We're almost there. I'm going to unscrew this part now. So let's do that. Now that's free. We need to get the panel. Now that that's free, we've got to get the panel off of here by taking off the screws that are attaching it to the uh, piece of plastic. So let's unscrew those. There we go. Now let's get this piece out. So I had a lot of glue here and I used an X-Acto knife to basically, or a box cutter, to basically cut out as much of the glue as I could, trying to slice it wherever I could. So now I'm going to use uh, two different sets of pliers to pull this apart because this is going to be a tough one. Got it. And no damage. Good. What I basically did was I used the two pliers, I clamped down, and then I used my fists to stabilize and push against each other to help pry it out. I was able to get it uh, nice and stable without damaging anything. Okay, now we got the panel here. The goal is to get rid of this speaker. This is the speaker and it's quite annoying. So if we look at it on the other side, we can see these are the two solder points we have to get rid of. Okay, my finger, my finger underneath is uh, pulling the speaker out as the solder melts. Sometimes it takes a few tries to find the right angle, which you can apply pressure. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Try to get the speaker. I'm using my finger to push on the speaker. There we go. Got it. You can see I got, actually I did get it out. There we go. So the speaker came out. And again, the whole time I was applying pressure on it to just push while it, the, it was melting. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this cable that we're going to eventually reattach to the circuit board, but the 
cable, we want it to be freestanding, or we want the panel to be freestanding. So what we're going to do is we're going to snake it through here, and it's going to come right out here. Now, if you want to be able to thread this back in and reassemble it one day, I suggest you snake some string or floss through, so you can always pull it back the other way if you want. For me, this is a no-brainer. It's going to be a uh, one-way trip. We're not going to bring it back because I know I'm never returning this thing and I like it quite a bit. So now I'm just gonna pull it through and it's gonna be a freestanding panel. It's a little bit stuck in here because of this rubber panel. This is this rubber uh, ring right here, making it a little bit difficult to get out. I'm gonna try to use two pliers at once to kind of pull out this rubber rubber seal, whatever this is. I can't tell what it is and I might break it in the process and I don't care. It's starting to come out. There we go. Got it. I was trying to pull the connector through the uh, this rubber seal that was on the treadmill and it wasn't coming out. So I just used some pliers. I yanked this out and I'm just going to cut it because I don't need this ever again. It's not going to go through easily. There we go. Now it's free. Okay, now that the wire is loose, we can reattach things. Uh, don't forget to first snake the wire through the back of the panel before you start reassembling. It's an important step that I miss sometimes and forget. Now we're going to reattach this piece and snake it. Make sure the wire is snaked through there. Okay, in fact, I did that too tight. I'm going to just loosen that a little bit. Okay, I'm going to loosen this a little bit more just so I can pull the slack out a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Now that we've got the wire snake through and it's reattached in there, we're just gonna snap this back together and screw the panel back together. And now the final piece for the panel, we're going to put this guy back on. I had it backwards. There we go. All right, we reassembled it, and we put the magnet back on. You can hear there's no beeping anymore, no more annoying beeps. Everything is put together to make sure it works. Press the power button and see if the treadmill goes. It's counting down. And you can see, it's hard to see on camera, but it's, it's going. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move these, uh, the back of these handlebars because they'll get in the way of the treadmill operation if I'm walking, right? My, my treadmill uh, runway gets cut short by a little bit, so we're going to move these arm bars. So the first thing we do is we've got to peel this back. Kind of like peeling back a banana peel, you flip it inside out, or a condom however you want to think of it, but you gotta just pull it, yank it to reveal the two screws here, and then you unscrew. And then repeat the same thing over on this side. All right, now that I have unscrewed this side, and I unscrewed this side, this should come right off. There it is. All right, now it's pretty much done. We've got the control panel separated. It's, uh, the speaker is removed, so it doesn't beep anymore. And we got the handlebars bars off. So no more handlebars. 
There's uh, this area is not obstructed when it's laying flat like this. If you have space under your desk, uh, you can flip it up, and then this becomes a slight incline. This is like seven degrees or so. It's it's pretty modest. So now I can walk in it in either configuration. So I'm gonna increase the speed just to a brisk 1.4, and I can just walk like this and use my computer. Or if this is proving to be too much of an incline. I can just lower it. Now this is a little bit flatter. This is closer to like a two degree incline or so. And that's pretty much it. Well, there you have it. I hope that makes things a little bit cleaner and clearer with an updated video. Again, still love this thing. Um, a couple of quick notes that comes up sometimes. So again, for maintenance, really the only thing I've done is just adjust the belt. If it gets too loose, you'll know it gets too loose because you step on it and then the motor stops, it slips, it's very scary. So when that happens, you just tighten it. Um, the goal for the treadmill tightness is you basically want to get it, uh, the belt to be as loose as possible without it slipping during normal operation because you want as minimal friction as minimal work for the motor the motor will eventually die but you want to give make it uh make his life as easy as possible until then and the second bit of maintenance was once a month once every couple hundred miles once every hundred miles or so a little bit of silicon spray underneath the belt and then you just walk on it kind of spread it out uh, if enough people want to see a video on that i can make it so just please let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video please give it a like it'll help other people find a good disassembly video because i first made this video because i couldn't find a disassembly video so i just I learned through trial and error and I made a video. So if you guys like it, please give it a like. Also, come check out our channel on twitch.tv slash Tomination Time, streaming there pretty often, doing diet and fitness stuff, where you'll see me actually using the treadmill uh, in action pretty often. So hope to see you around.